Hello everyone. I just wanted to remind those in Lagos and all of us. So this message is also to myself. That being Igbo has nothing to do with coming from the southeastern part of Nigeria. The fact that you are educated with a little bit of affluence can make you Igbo. The fact that you have affluence can make you Igbo. And so what is going on must worry every one of us. Whether it is real or perceived, perception they say is everything. We all must be concerned because at the end of the day, we are all Igbos. Things start little and then we think, oh, it's none of our business. We do not realize how much of our business it is. And there is a quote I, I, love, I, I love to use, even though I don't know that quote of head. But it's one that resonates so much when you're talking about injustice and the danger of not focusing on injustice when it is happening. And I'll tell you this. It is this quote by Martin Neomola. Hope I got that right. He said, first, they came for the communist and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialist and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. Injustice to one is injustice to all. And injustice to anyone anywhere is injustice to everyone everywhere. That's the only when we see something happening to another, we must pick up. In that way, we ensure that it ends before it gets to us. Of all the things that are happening in the country, we saw what happened during election in Lagos State, where people were prevented from voting merely because they looked like people from a certain region. And there were many people who were actually indigents of that state, born and brought up there. Everything back and forth looked like them. Where everything is for them. Married, maybe probably have no any other person in their whole family lineage. But yet, they were called Igbo. Why? Because they looked a certain way. Not because they were from a certain region. That's how it is. And that's why anytime I talk about, you know, a revolution, I'm always scared of that bloody revolution. People are also interested in it. Oh, let there be a bloody revolution. I say every one of us will be seen as the perpetrators. Why? Either we have a clean phone, clean shirt, good phone, a little bit of education, a little bit of money here, then we become the enemies. Because for some people, it's really never about tribe or religion. It's about economic, economic prosperity. I say this all the time when I speak. Even most of the so-called religious riots that people talk about, it's not really religion. It's about economy. There are some people who feel that, oh, some people have come into our place and taken away the wealth that should belong to us. What they fail to realize is that the wealth is still there but they haven't bothered to unlock it. And then there are people who come and they unlock it. Well, the fault is not theirs. If you want to unlock the one right there now, you can. In all of the things that have been going on in Lagos, the demolition and all of that, yes, I'll be the first to say to you, yes, there are issues, there are people who build on canals, people who, who build houses that they are not supposed to build and all of that. The government must be responsible. Government must be empathetic. And government must be responsive. What do I mean by all of this? 
Government cannot start tackling issue from the point of saying, oh, let's just start demolition. Let's start destroying people's houses. Let's start destroying wealth in the country, let's, in the state and all of that. Without first going back to say, how did those houses get to, the, to that place? How did they get to be built? Who built them? These are the questions that must be asked, whether anybody wants it or not. Otherwise, it becomes the vindictiveness that is to be. There are a lot of videos where people have come out to say, oh, we'll take away the houses of so-and-so if they don't do this. We'll do that. We'll do this. Even the, 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 the wife of the current illegitimate president in Nigeria, she's on video having said some of those things. And then when people react in that way, they have a, they have a justification for that reaction. But what I'm saying, my message basically, is to fellow citizens, not just in Lagos, but every one of us, and to myself, that this thing that is happening portends danger for all of us. The reason that Nigeria got into war in the first place and had the civil war, we never addressed those reasons. It was no victor, no vanquish. I don't know how we got to that place. Instead of coming out and addressing them. And over now, we've seen again, we're slowly moving, repeating history because we failed to learn from history. And when we're caught in that truth of history repeating itself, no one is going to be safe. All of us are victims waiting to happen. I remember a few years ago when the whole issue of, you know, unknown gunmen and all of that started in the southeastern part of Nigeria. And we're saying to people, this was how Boko Haram started. Yes, it started with people fighting, agitating for their rights, saying that, oh, they, were, they, they wanted uh, justice, they wanted peace, they wanted corruption to end and all of that. And then they became what they became. Yes, they had people who were supporting them at that, at that time before they became violent. I remember the kind of attack I got on my social media handle. When I kept pointing out to people, I say, who then? Who? The person that, when they kill one person, who determines who is that person that is supposed to be killed? At the end of the day, all of us will be people that are supposed to be killed. Because one way or the other, somebody else will see you as an enemy. And that's where we are today. Everybody is a victim. And that is what it is with what is happening right now. And so it is very important for every one of us to, to stand up and fight this injustice. Whatever needs to be done, let it be done within the ambit of the law. That the government has some draconian powers to be able to do things anyhow. It's never the way to go. We have a lot, a lot of laws in Nigeria that are obnoxious. And if we are a people with decency, with empathy, with courage, with patriotism, those laws will not be in place. But they are. But then what I, and I will end this by saying, what then about the people who, con about the government rather, not the people who continue to flaunt the laws and continue to give people, give people rights to do certain things. To, if, even if we look at this issue of houses that you're destroying, how did they get, how, how did those houses get to be built in, in the first place? There are agencies that are supposed to monitor every building. If you say there's a house that has been built on canal, how did that happen? What was the work of the agencies that are being paid with taxpayers' money to ensure that houses are not built on Canada? What were they doing? Were they sleeping? Have you punished them so that you know they won't commit that next time? Or is it a case of, oh, you destroy these houses, then the next thing, those agencies will now go again and give permit to other people to build on those same places that are canals? Dear Nigerians, Dear Nigerians, dear Nigerians, we always think it is not our business until it becomes our business and we are drawn in. Enabling environment for government to continue to behave in an obnoxious manner will not all go well. And in this country, if we want peace, we must ensure we fight for justice. 
Thank you very much and bye-bye.